Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm <coughs> getting something out of my throat. Oh, <laughs> gotta be off, able to talk if you're gonna you off guard. Podcast. Link. Oh, hey, Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are reminiscing about the good old days when times were bad before the internet. What was it like? To live before the internet. Well, we can tell you because we were there for it. So pull up a chair. And we're also there for the part that was after the We're internet. still here. We're still here. We're still, we're still in it. And the internet's still happening. Every single generation and every single person likes to sort of center all of time around themselves. This is a very natural thing to do. That's why everyone always thinks that the world is ending when they're alive. Everyone, if you're uh, many Christians, and when we were uh, well, they center time around no Jesus, I, right? Not, but not themselves. Uh, yeah, but when Jesus is going to come back, like you, uh, oh, you, you remember, okay. you remember what it was what it was like to feel like you were like, I really think Jesus is going to come back in my lifetime. It, it's just we all like to think that, right? So take this with a grain of salt, but I do feel like there's a significance to how old we are specifically as it relates to the internet, which is obviously oh, yeah. one of the hugest, most influential technological shifts that's ever happened. And that is that we got a childhood that was completely internet free, internet free with the exception of a few, like we were exposed to the internet in like very, very metered doses at some rich kid's house when we were like 16 or 17. But in terms of the internet being a don't, part of our lives, just call Trent some rich kid. <laughs> <laughs> he was more than some rich kid. He was a, he was a yeah, special he, friend. He was great, but in the context of that uh, point, he was just some rich kid, as you would. I uh, mean, you know. he had a couch in his bedroom. It, it, yeah, you know. I mean, if you got a bedroom with a couch in it. That's pretty amazing. His and then bedroom. If you've got a computer with the internet in it. Trent's that's bedroom really amazing. was bigger than not only bigger than my parents' bedroom. It was bigger than my living room. <laughs> Trent's bedroom was bigger than every house in the McLaughlin household. I mean, in fairness, his dad was a builder. You and know, build I, I would expect no less. Right. If you're gonna build yourself a house, give the kids big rooms. I was like, this house has two staircases. It's just more roof. You know, I mean, we were so wowed by this guy's Trent. I'm getting off on a little Trent uh, sidebar here. <laughs> no, this is this is very pertinent. But I haven't it, landed my point yet. For a boy that was wowed by a couch and two different staircases, <laughs> there's two ways up to the second floor in this guy's house. Well, it could have a fire. You could go up one way, you can come down another way. You could have like the... An, like a foot race on multiple levels, and then there would be in each staircase could be one way. Did, if our minds were so blown by that, think about what the internet did. You think that Trent went up one staircase and then came down the other yeah, one? Yeah, it was a down and an up. But you know how when you have to walk someplace, like maybe it's no, someplace in your neighborhood, not since the internet, uh, <laughs> and you walk there one way. And you walk back a different way because you feel I love that, that it's shorter. There's multiple times when I've realized, why do I come back this way? Why don't I come back the same exact way that I came if I thought that that was the shortest way? Well, I mean, what is that? When you're in a, it's no, I'm talking about walking. It's it's oh, you're talking just about walking. That's what I started. What with, is was that? Walking. Well, the answer to your question is um, stimulus, man. What I'm asking, really, in the context of that rich kid, Trent, some rich kid is did he, did he suffer from that same thing? And do you think that he came up one staircase mm -hmm. because he thought that was the best way upstairs, but going down was the better way to go downstairs? And do you think that that's why his dad put two staircases into his house because he knew that Trent needed to have options and the other, other son? Uh, to answer your question, no, I don't think okay. that was the reason. Thank you. I don't think that was the reason. Yeah, but we... We have, do, you know, do we have something to offer on this subject? Well, we definitely have a I POV. I haven't finished the second part of my yeah, point. Yeah, so finish it. Um, I, you know, I'm just waiting. We are the only generation that had a childhood completely internet-free and then adulthood that was basically 
while we were in college, the internet became a thing that was going to be in everyone's life. While we were in college, like while we were going from right childhood to adulthood, that changed. And that's just an unusual thing that like put a feather in our in our forty five year old caps. Yeah, because we can say that about ourselves. Not everybody can say that, Link. So we do have a unique perspective on this. That's what I was getting to. And we're going to give it to you. I think one of the reasons this is so fresh in our minds is because we just released a video over on the Rhett and Link channel. This is the third video that we've released once we started putting videos out over there. Just, you know, keeping you guessing, expressing ourselves creatively. Give it a, give it a watch. It's... Um, as of the recording of this, I don't know exactly what we're titling it, which is always subject to change anyway, but it's right. uh, Rhett and Link in 1984. So we subjected ourselves to all the limitations of being in 1984, which is the year that our friendship began. Um, and uh, yeah, we decided that we wanted to have the recess that we never got because when we met, you know, our teacher held us in from the recess. But we, so we, we constructed this, this elaborate scheme to ex put ourselves back in the 1984 of it all. Driving a car from 1984, wearing clothes from 1984, only speaking to people who lived in 1984, and only using technological accoutrement that was available in 1984, specifically maps uh, of the paper variety. It was mostly about the maps. It was a lot about the maps. There's also because we had to navigate across town. There's also a music video in there, and the song featured is on your streaming services, uh, LimeWire, Napster. If you want to burn a CD yep. of that, um, you can do it. Actually, if you want to buy the Casingle. Yeah, 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 yeah. So before the internet, we had something called Casingles, and if you, I, I never, never bought one. I've, I very rarely bought a Casingle. Um, you can get that at mythical.com. It's um, uh, You Are Here is the name of the song. It explores um, paper maps, the conceit of the video in musical form, and also uh, male friendships, which is another discussion for another time. Like maybe, next episode. Maybe next episode. Um, I'm very, so yeah, I'm very happy with the song. Check out, check out the 1984 video on the Rent Link channel. Please comment, share it with people. Um, I'm very happy with the song. It. I love the song. Uh, I'm very happy with the video. Very happy with the song. I'm getting to do a little genre-specific yeah. uh, songwriting. I'm enjoying that part of, of, uh, of the Renaissance, bringing it back, going Definitely. back to the, to, the, to the OG roots and, and, and writing these songs. We were just working on a song yesterday for the next thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is it the next thing? Is it the next one or the one after the... No, it's the next it's one. It's the next one. It's the next one. Okay. The fourth one. So check that out. But yeah, so we're in like this um, pre-internet frame of mind. Let me tell you, it's just, it's just, the struggle is real when it comes to using paper maps. If you're rusty on that, and I don't know any reason why you wouldn't be, um, yeah, just watch that video before you decide. You're like, you know what? Things are better. Things are better. You talk about going one way and coming another way. Um. Okay, I mean, we explored so much about traffic and driving in the video that I don't, you know, we don't have to talk about that too much. But sometimes when you're looking on Google Maps and you went one way to get somewhere, it, it, if, sometimes it just depends on which direction you're facing. Oh, I'm on this side of the street and yeah. now there's a couple of right, you know, it's right Google takes left. into account all the right turns and all the left turns That's true. and it can send you a totally different way. I drove an hour to uh, Malibu over this past weekend and went one way, went through Calabasas, looking for some rappers, saw no one. We had to get through the gates. And then once we got done with all of our Malibu's shopping and dining and just having a good old time, apparently we were facing the other direction and the traffic had changed in such a way it went back a totally different way. That's, that's one of the beauties of Cannon. life. What did you take? Which, which road did you take? Uh, we took, um, no, we took the one with, uh, 
Malibu Creek State Park on the way there. But then we came all the way down the PCH oh, on the way back. Wow. Came through Santa nice. Monica. Yeah. yeah. Scenic. Well, they're There's both a, scenic in different ways. You know, taking a long way home is something you should do. If it was my wreck today, I might recommend that. But oh, there's well, nothing I'm, more I'm thrilling got, than, got a better wreck than, that. than my map telling me to go the other way back. I was talking about it. I was like, I'm so glad we're going this way. And that it's, I also know that it's the quicker way. And also, I don't like the other way anymore because I've already gone that way. Do you remember the first time that you uh, went back to North Carolina after having grown up there and we knew all the ways to like, I guess at some point there was a map involved, but mostly it was like, okay, if you lived in Bowie's Creek and you had to get to Lillington or you had to get, Lillington was easy because it's just 421, but like, let's say you had to get to Cary. It, you had to go to uh, Waverly Place. Yeah. Because you had a hot date. Oh yeah. For a movie. Mm -hmm. You knew how to get there because you had driven with your parents, and the, your parents had been there multiple times. And then there was this transition when you were 15, and your parents were telling you where to turn, right, based on the fact that they had memorized it. And then by the time you got your license at 16, you knew how to get there. But it, yeah. was, a, it was very specific. It was like these right. turns, and you had the different places that you could go on a regular basis. When I went home the first time with, I guess it was, it may have been a GPS. It, might, it could have been my phone. I can't remember which one. I know GPS, I was using that out here for when we first moved out here before we used the phone. Yeah. But the first time I had a computer telling me where to go to like get to carry, it sent me a slightly different way. Yeah. And because we, were, we weren't making the best choices. Nope. Every single time, we we were making the same exact choices of how we were going to get to us to a place, and of course, traffic was something that you encountered. It wasn't something you could anticipate or plan for. It was like, oh well, it turns out there's a there's a combine on this route today. Yeah, and that was just something you had to deal with. Do you, do you ever recall being learning that there was a different way to get to Waverly Place that was better than the way that you had had learned? Yeah, I, rem I would go with other people and be like, oh, they're going a different direction. Everybody would have their way. Every family. And somehow, you, if you were riding with another family, you, you could pick up their way. Mm -hmm. But, oh, I, got a new, I can't wait to show my family the new way. Wow. Yeah, going. It, it, hold on. Like cut, I remember when I started. I don't think I could have done that. Cutting through to Bojangles. Cutting through at Fuquay with that Bojangles and then going back through where uh, Don lived in that like sunset lake sunset lake i remember when i first discovered the sunset lake cutoff to get to carry that was that's nice a, that's a good boy. route and then but then this they lowered the speed limit mm -hmm. leaving fuquay and that got frustrating i was like maybe i need to go back to my old ways i don't think i could have sold my dad 55. on a different family's way like if, right. I, if i came home and i was like hey dad the maddoxes can get to carry Five minutes faster. Well, than you. two minutes faster. Yeah. Let's be real. Like he would have been like, I don't care. You know what I mean? I don't. I, I think he was like, this is the way we get to carry. We're not going to change it because the Maddoxes get there two minutes faster. And how would you even know that? What were you timing it with your stopwatch, son? Right. You know, he put me on the defensive real fast. Oh yeah. Uh, there's no way I could defend that. <laughs> But, but now yeah. we don't have to have, everybody's family is equal now because and we're all using the internet to get where we go. I think it has to be more uh, apropos in LA, but I'm guessing anywhere that there's some sort of pseudo metropolis, you, you're starting to adopt this habit of, even if you know exactly where you're going, you put it in your, your map, you put it in your ways or your Google map, I do not use Apple Map. It's it's just not as good. It's not um, as good. Yeah. And because it's gonna tell you the right way to go and then it's gonna tell you if something changes. It's like you're having this active relationship with the internet that's constantly assessing whether you're doing the the best thing. You know I, that makes me feel so good. I was so lost. Yeah. I was so lost for so long and I didn't even know it. And maybe we'll get into this, but obviously uh, I mean, I'm not too worried about it, but we have lost something. But we may have we may have lost something that we don't really yeah, need. Yeah, lost until getting we, lost until we need it. So, 
if if you're a, a kid and you're you're born into the new system and you and the way that you think about getting somewhere is like well we use gps to get anywhere we don't use any of our own intuition or landmarks or memorizing the turns or whatever i mean ev- eventually you just by default you'll memorize things if you're going the same way every single time yeah but obviously you're losing something that you're part, some part of your brain that exists so that you can navigate your world you're not exercising it anymore like we don't none of us exercise our math brains very often. I mean, how many people do anything beyond like the 10, 10 times 10? Like, <laughs> right. I haven't solved for X in quite a while, um, much and, less integrated. And then hopefully the world will continue on and it won't end or, you know, the, all the GP, you know, there won't be some like giant sun flare that ends up taking all the GPS out and we have to suddenly become like people who use maps again. But if we do, uh, I think we'll be fine. My point I'm making is that you should feel okay because you did it. You did it in the video. I did it in the video. We got to where you got there before I did. We we we're, we can navigate via map. Even maps that aren't even current, we can do that. But yeah. I don't know about our kids. No, there's no our way. Our kids will just we will find them spinning in a circle somewhere. So we got some categories we're going to go through um, just to kind of jog our memory about what life was like for us before the internet and through all the there was a bunch of strange transitions like even you talk about gps when we moved out here 12 years ago what we were buying dedicated gps units to go on the dash tom 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 was or, another brand yeah or a garmin no i think we both had a tom tom i think we got a deal at best buy and it was um, not as good as what we have now. I don't. I think you could pay a service and get it to connect to like traffic, but there's no way. It I would just work. remember the lady would say, "Take a left on the five towards Sacramento." Sacramento. Sacramento. <laughs> you didn't even say. You just you just said the word Sacramento. Right. <laughs> Sacramento. Yeah, they fixed that eventually. Okay, we're going to talk about a lot more. I do want to talk about my shirt. This is the good mothical morning. Uh, That's nice. There's some hidden things That's in That's a this. black t-shirt. Uh, we have it in a black with a white graphic, and then we have it in cream with a brown graphic, I think. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're giving you options because it's that's cool what y'all shirt. want. And uh, it's got a lot of hidden. This is for the like, you know, this and first of all, I mean, this is for if you're a super fan. Yes. But if you're like the kind of fan that doesn't want people to know that you're a fan of things, which I relate to, um, this is a way to like sud- subtly sort of indicate your that's a cool shirt. What does it mean? Uh, nothing. <laughs> you know, like you can just say don't be that. ashamed of us. Or you can be like, oh, it's an Internet show called Good Mythical Morning. Like you can do that, too. You have options. We're giving you options just like Trent's dad gave him options to get up how and down to get up and down his <laughs> stairs. <laughs> right. Go to mythical.com and get the Good Mythical Morning shirt in both of the colors and in the sizes. Ear Biscuits is supported by Chime. Good money habits are really important to have, but can be hard to maintain. Mm -hmm. Whether you just scored your first job, congrats. Congrats. Or you're ready to take finances more seriously, congrats. Congrats. Now's the time to start a healthy financial journey. When you sign up for Chime and link a qualifying direct deposit, you get access to benefits like getting paid up to two days early and fee-free overdraft up to $200. And with Chime, there are no monthly fees, no minimum balance, and absolutely no deposit required to become a member. So, sign up for a Chime checking account today to link your paycheck. It only takes two minutes and it does not affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash ear. That's chime.com slash ear. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See chime.com slash spot me. Ear Biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. Uh, most weeks, I... You know, my time is filled with this job that we have here. This good old job. uh, And my time at home Mm -hmm. as a husband, as a father. Yes. And you can realize that most of the week has passed 
And I haven't taken any time for me. And I can't be the best me for everyone else in my life when that is the case. I feel that it's easy to get caught up in doing things for others, especially as bosses, husbands and fathers like we are, uh, which can lead to things like burnout and stress. And therapy can give you the tools to have more balance in your life so you can support yourself and support others at the same time. I believe in my therapy as me time. Um, it, even when I don't know that I have things to talk about, I end up having stuff to talk about, things to process, to understand myself better, and to 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 put myself to to enter back into the the game. You know, it's like take a little me time in the dugout, then get back in the game. You know. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash ear. Do you remember my phone number? Um, your current one? Of course not. Your uh, oh, of course I remember your old phone number. You want me to tell it to you? Uh huh. Nine one nine. It wasn't. Nope. Nine. It was nine one zero. Mm hmm. Well, I re I remember back when they started that new area code nine one zero, and I did. You were not nine one zero, dude. Nine one zero was the new fangled area code, but you had a, you oh, had a oh, line. Are you saying that nine one nine was before nine one zero, and Absolutely. then it went back to nine one nine? I thought there was another one before nine one zero. Uh uh. Yes, nine one nine. You sure? Nine one zero was newer. Yes, it was a big moment in Harnett County. I do remember that, but I could have sworn it wasn't nine one nine before it was nine one zero. I was not. When I moved, when mom and I moved to the new house, we got a 910 number. 910-893-2729? Uh-uh. Oh, you're talking, no, you're, my old number, 919-893-2979. Hold on, that, hold, what did I say? It's not that. <laughs> two seven. You said the, you, you got the Oh, yeah, 2979. Two nine seven nine, and I just remember that for the first time in a long time, which because I never dialed my own number. Um, and then when I moved, I got a nine one zero number, a nine one zero eight nine three two six zero nine one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I got it. And and when we move and but yours is nine one nine eight nine three five zero eight three. Yeah, because I had the same you know listen, forever. I had a stable family. <laughs> My parents stayed together. We <laughs> stayed in one house. <laughs> I made it very easy for you to remember my phone number. Five zero eight three. It yeah. was the, literally. Do you remember our, that was my parents' phone number until they moved? Like, uh, hopefully they don't still have that phone number. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, they probably didn't they, port their they number. They didn't port their number. Not, uh, do you remember our dorm room number freshman year of college? 24. Not the number to the, the <laughs> oh, phone oh, number. Oh, oh, oh. No, <laughs> not a chance. 919 515. That, that means 515 means nothing to me. Five, How do you remember a, our dorm room? It was a room campus number? prefix. And then the second Why did I need to remember that? Because <laughs> to tell the ladies who were going to call us, you know. Hello, can I speak to the shorter one? <laughs> That's what I don't I say. <laughs> I, I, do, I do not remember 515 at all. 515-9182 or something? I don't know. Can't, I can't quite remember. It. Okay, so as we were demonstrating, uh, yeah, like you knew everyone's phone number that you had to call, and I guess at some point someone had looked it up. Mostly it was probably just like, what's your phone number? And they wrote it down and then you just memorized it. But you associated, it's crazy. And of course you only had to memorize really the last four digits because you didn't even have to dial the area code. Right. It was just, you know, 893 and then those four digits. So somewhere in your brain, you had this spreadsheet. Rolodex. That had a family or a person within that family 
associated with a four digit number. And that isn't something that happens anymore. That's mm-hmm. a part of our brain that we don't use anymore. And like, do you ever sit down with your kids and make sure that they memorize, they've memorized your phone number? Well, Lando's 13 and we were having a conversation last week about it. Somehow he brought it up and he was like trying, he, he was struggling to remember my number, but then he did remember it. Well, yours is easy to remember. I mean, I'm not going to give me spoilers, Don't say it. but you have the easiest <laughs> phone number to remember of anyone that I know. Yeah, because I knew somebody who worked for Nextel in 1996. And they gave no, you like 19. A, they no, gave you a primo no, no, number, no, 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 man. No. It was 2001 when I got my a cell phone. 2000, 2001. Yep. Um, but so, so okay. What did he say? Did he remember it? Does he know your number? He remembered it, yeah. Because in the, in I think the that's case important. where his phone dies, right? and then he's got to like go up and, first of all, talk to a stranger to ask them to use the phone. Like, is that, could you even do that? Like, have you ever had to ask a stranger to use their cell phone to make a call? Uh, no, but my mom did when I was late picking her up at the airport and her phone died. Remember that? Oh, I'm so glad you have a good number. Because what if, like, I yeah. changed my number. At some point when I changed uh, when you got service popular. providers. No, I, it wasn't because of that. I changed my number when I changed service providers, and I had the option to port the number over, but I, but I saw an opportunity. Having the same number since the year 2000, as I did, uh, let's just say there are a lot of people who have my phone number. And yeah. I didn't, and I was like, this is an opportunity to reset who has my phone number. Now, I yeah. still have that phone number that forwards to a Google number. So if you call me or text me on that, I can see, but then I can kind of make a choice if I want to interact because that's technically not my number anymore. <laughs> I mean, when you start talking about this in, in pre-internet, it's just like, you, you didn't know where anybody was. If they weren't with you, and, and if, you, if they didn't answer their landline, they could be anywhere. And if they were like a child of yours? Like, we know where our kids are because of location services. Yeah, we do. Right? I mean... I mean, I've got... We've got... Uh, and Chris... Like, I don't... I, I can look at... Christy can see where I'm at. I can see where she's You can she's see the at. whole family. It's so... It's so useful and gives you peace of mind, right? Especially as a, as a parent or a loving partner. It feels a, it feels a little big brothery, I think, for the kids. Well, I mean, you know? every, everybody knows that it's, that it's happening... But yeah, there was there were times when it was like, well, I'm just going to sit around and maybe uh, maybe he'll show maybe him. Red will call me back. Maybe he'll show up. I'll sit on my porch and see if he rides by <laughs> on his bike. Yeah, on my bike. I mean, and if you were late for something, you were just is he did he know about it? Did he forget? It's like, yeah, you would wait for people. You would wait. You would believe the best, but. After a certain amount of time, you'd be like, we're leaving. There was a lot of... I'll find out later what happened. Unknowns. Like, I think my childhood would have been so much better if my mom could have communicated that, yes, I am going to pick you up. I'm just going to be late. Like, <laughs> you freaked me out so much. Old as, wounds. As a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the one for me, man. Is she going to pick me up? <laughs> always, Sometimes she just wouldn't pick you up always, or would just be late. No, she would always pick me up, but like she was always late. Well, you should have gotten used to that. I know, but just I couldn't. adjusted your schedule. She's like some sort of peace of mind there, man. It's like, oh, well, you know, once, you, once you're 12 or 13, you got to have a cell phone. You got to be con- totally at all times connected to the internet. But I, I, feel, nice. I feel a bit sorry for our kids in this regard. Now, obviously, as a parent, I like to be able to immediately know where both of my kids are. And, you know, I'm not that, at this point, I've got a a 19-year-old that, you know, I'm not, he's still on the family thing, so I can see where he's at, but I'm not checking up on him. 14-year-old, okay, you know, Mm. depends on how late it is, whatever. But we're not particularly uh, strict about this, but we have, Shepard has friends whose parents are a little bit more concerned about this. And literally just the other night, well, in the morning, Jesse and I looked and we had a text from a mom of a kid who had been hanging out with Shepard and the text came at like 11.50 p.m. We were already in bed. It was like a Friday night, but, you know, went to bed. And it was like, I can see that the boys are out roaming as they're 
you know, prone to do. And, you know, what, or when are they coming back or whatever? And we were like, sorry, we got this after we went to bed, which is basically like, we're our, you, when your kid comes to our house, they are doing whatever they want and we just go to sleep. They don't even have to be home, just so you know. And the reason that I do that. Why didn't she just call her kid? Uh, I think me, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but you probably I, did after you didn't answer. I think that who's in charge here? I've I've tried to because our parents had zero idea where we were so often, and a, many times we would tell them one thing and do a slightly related thing that wasn't exactly what we told them to do. That a was pivot. Just, that was know, just kind of how you navigate. Just a little things. pivot. Um, I kind of want my kids to have that. There's no autonomy. Have that freedom to feel like there is no tether. Right. But there is. There's a digital tether. Yeah. Is, is it safer? Of course. Is it better? I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean... How did you answer the phone at your house if, if somebody called? I, I, I wanted to hear your answer to this. Um, at my house, I would say, Hello? 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 You say it three times? No, <laughs> no. I'm just trying to get the tone right. If I was at uh, Nana's house, the, I was told, I was taught to say, new residents. Right. And Every family I, had, I think a, because had, a, had a, a mode. I didn't live there, and if I, people would think that if a kid answered the phone and there's no kid in the house, that like they had the wrong number. So I said, new residents there. When I was at your house, I was like, I would just pick it up and just hang it right back up. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a residence. Again, Neil residence, very I, professional. I thought the, the way that I remember thinking about this is that the rich families always said the residence. <laughs> and I and I remember thinking, I don't think we're rich enough to say to call this a residence. <laughs> like I just remember thinking, like I don't. I think those people in Keith Hills, like if you call a house in Keith Hills, which is yeah, a country that's a club, residence. that's a residence. Yeah, they resided. Uh, Juby residence, you know. Right. Yeah, Maddox residence. That felt appropriate, but McLaughlin residence. We just it was like hello, you know, hello. Can I speak? Hello? Can I speak, Hello? can I speak to one of your parents? Either one will do. You know. But most of the and when you called somebody, I, okay, so could you um oh. I'm, I'm calling the phone, could you answer like I'm calling Michael Juby. Okay. And Juby resident. Can I speak to Michael? No, 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 no. Is Michael there? Yeah, he's here. Is this Rhett? That's yes. typically what they would say. Yes. Hey, right, Mr. Hold on Juby. a second. Michael! Come to the phone! It's not in your pocket. That doesn't exist yet. And we're not putting one in your room yet. Get in here. Exactly. So, that's exactly how it would go. But the thing that I didn't do is I didn't say, Hello, Mr. Juby. It's Rhett. How you doing? Is Michael here? It, I just said, Is Michael there? Like I wouldn't, it's, right. I had no etiquette. Do, what, what, yeah. Is that what you would have done? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I did. And I mean, you, you had to talk to parents a lot but more. But then when you showed up at somebody's house. Don't even get me started with the girlfriends. We, we had a neighbor. I'm not going to name names. We had a neighbor who would, because when you would go to somebody's house, you would knock on the door, their parents would come to the door, and you would say, is Michael there? <laughs> you know, that's yeah. what I would do. And uh, but we had a neighbor who would come to our door, he'd ring the doorbell. My mom or dad would open the door and he wouldn't say anything. <laughs> he'd just like stand there because it was like, you know, <laughs> you know why I'm here. I'm not here for you. <laughs> and she you would know what and I'm my mom for. would say, when so and so comes to the door, he just doesn't say anything. I, and so I will say, Do you want to know if Rhett's here? <laughs> And then he'll like nod and be like, well, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> and he just turns around and walks away. And then on his bike and she and wouldn't know away. where you were either, man. I don't have any idea where he's at. We haven't seen him in 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> do you, now, that, now that you got the internet, you got these cellular telephones, you can, you can be late to things because you can just be in constant communication about it. It gives you uh, an excuse to be a little running bit Running 10 rude, late. Let's be honest. I'm running 15 late. I, but I'm on the way, you know? Even a restaurant. 
You know, I've caught. We're on our way to restaurants. Oh man, we calling were. restaurants. Oh, we're we're gonna be there. I promise. Don't don't give away our table. I'd say we call restaurants, letting them know we're not gonna be there on time forty percent of the time. But it's usually within the like twenty minute window. Like if it goes beyond fifteen, you gotta call. You gotta call. You gotta call because they'll just so give 15. that table to somebody else. What about information in general? You know, it's like there was all this talk as the internet was becoming the advent. Oh, it's the information age. You well, know? it was, and it is, and I it, think it's. Of course, it still is. I think that to, for me, it's, the, it's like this is probably the. It's like the past the information thing. age. This, this is the biggest aspect of what I feel. It, I mean, everything is different in the way that we're talking about it. But if you wanted to know something when we were kids, you would ask an adult, and that adult also knew nothing. You know right. what I'm saying? It's like they they didn't have the internet either. Right. Like, there were some adults who knew some things. But if you were like, what's the capital of Delaware? Right. But well, what are the chances that somebody you know knows that if you're not in Delaware? You know what I mean? Like, I can't tell you right now, and we did it on GMM recently. I don't remember either because I don't— it, you, you don't know, have to remember. I don't have to remember. Because it's in here, man. Sorry to the people of Delaware. You, I'm sure it's beautiful. I'm sure it's a beautiful capital. I'm sure you do lots of Delaware governing. I'm sure it's very important. We from just that, don't know it. From that location. And you might not even know the capital of North Carolina. What is it? It's Raleigh, okay? Delaware you thought it was residents. Charlotte? It's not Charlotte. It's Raleigh. Um, <laughs> so, but here's the thing. All the information was available in books. So it was available in encyclopedias. Yes. And it was available in the library. But as I was thinking about this, I realized never once, not one time that I can remember did I ever have a question about something and then open the encyclopedia or go to the library to get the answer? Never. Not once. I only use them yeah, yeah. if I had a book report. Right. If you had an assignment. Never. Right. Never. We were just happy with not knowing stuff. We didn't know like, Well, you know, it's like somebody said, and then, but you would, if somebody, if Uncle Bobby said something about, you know, or well, the capital of Delaware is St. Paul. Not that. That's Minnesota. Yeah, I know, but you would be thinking, well, it's like, that's, pro that's good enough. Yeah, yeah. Why would you question? Why, gonna, why am I going to make that up? I'm going I'm to walk some, I'm going to walk to a bookshelf and crack open a book? Yeah. <laughs> no, why? You wouldn't do that. Encyclopedias were cool, though, man. For the pictures? Yes. For the, yeah. For the pictures and just like, sometimes it would be like, I'm going to read the encyclopedia for fun. I mean, to give you an idea of what we didn't have going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I'm going to get the Q. The, well, actually, it's like, I'm going to get, uh, Q didn't have its own, because Q's not, in, there's not enough stuff that starts with Q. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like QRS, or maybe, right. what comes before Q? P? Maybe PQ was like, it was alphabetical is what I'm getting at, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Every single book. I mean, the fact were, ha, had uh, alphabetical things. The fact that the encyclopedias were supposed to contain all knowledge, yet Q still had to share a book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right, right. Isn't that crazy? And it wasn't. You're telling me that there ain't enough Q related stuff and, for its own book in the book that had to have everything? And think about this. Q sucks. No one in their right mind who was building a database right now is organizing it. Yeah, sure, you can sort it alphabetically, but no one sorts information alphabetically because that's not how the human mind works. The human mind works in category. So it doesn't, so in alphabetical right. order, when you're thinking about something, just think about it for a second. So you would see like, uh, I'm gonna learn about, let, let, let's not use Q because it's too hard to come up with words. I'm gonna learn about, if I'm in the C's, it's like Canada. And then right after Canada is cans. Nope, it's the other way around, I think. No, Canada, because C-A-N-A, -A, and then cans would be C-A-N-S, so it would be the next thing. We don't even know how to do alphabetical order anymore. <laughs> Canada Can. comes before cans. Oh, with an S, well, I, yeah. You add an S yeah, in this you, illustration. Yeah, but you don't, you, they uh, don't, you don't look up the plural version okay. of things. Can. Comes before Canada. And then also, in between, well, and then. And so then after Canada comes Canada. Well, no. With a Z. No. Canada. Can France. C-A-N-N-E-S. And so you'd be like, I'm going to learn about what a can is. <laughs> and then I'm going to learn about the country of Canada. 
Yeah. And then I'm going to learn about a city in France. That's my afternoon. What do those things right. have in common besides being C-A, starting with C-A-N? Like, that's not how people's brains work. And we, that's the best that we had. Now, the Dewey Decimal System in the library. <laughs> that was awesome. That was much better. That was so good. It was organized by concept and, like, theme. But then it, within the themes and the concepts was alphabetical. Because how else the hell are you going to do it? Why the hell? Speaking of hell... Would you start to put math into like something that's not math related? Why are you going to add a decimal to like a group of organization that has nothing to do with math? Putting decimals in words. Things were desperate back then. I actually, th- I, I think the Dewey Decimal System is pretty great. I, I don't want to really, I don't want to. Nobody throw that goes the to the library. What do people, their libraries still exist? Are, are new libraries being built? Why, 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 how? Well, we went to the library at NC State, and it's awesome, and it has a robot that gets the book. But it's hard to not think, Yeah, this robot is getting this book. <laughs> this feels like a very temporary and unnecessary step because that robot could just be a computer without an arm and could retrieve this information not from a physical book, Oh, you're talking about a laptop? With yeah, an yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think people go to the libraries now to nostalgia. force themselves to study. I think it's a stu- first of all, stu- it is a study environment for yeah. sure. It's got you get it's the vibe. It's like I'm here to learn. I can't do this next to my bed. Uh-uh. You know. Yeah, psychologically, libraries are important. Practically, they're useless. No. What? No. <laughs> uh, Jenna is. Jenna uh, loves libraries. <laughs> libraries. We're pushing her buttons. <laughs> Defend libraries. I don't know. It's like libraries are are a great resource for people who can't afford certain things. Like there's a library close by that has like a sound booth where you can go in and record. There's also a library that you could check out like uh, a 3D printer and print things off. And you can go to libraries for free classes on Is how co- to speak English. It's free These are Wi-Fi. community centers. These are, you're not describing it's, a yeah, library. That's a, that's a library. That Libraries do all these things. And you can also check pivoted. out. You can also check out um uh, uh, national park passes at libraries. If you so you don't have to pay to go to a national park. There's so many great free services about libraries, and they're fully underfunded by the government right now. And I just want people because to know that libraries are important. Okay, now <laughs> we'll I believe the name. I believe in everything you just said. <laughs> Thank you. Libraries are more expansive. <laughs> we were talking sim- simply about the books. Also, they have computers, and not everybody has a computer. So it is a way for people to get on the internet. I think that's great, but I, I, I would just call it something else. Well, that's tough. We got to put gotta change the signage. Uh, we can't do that. Yeah, that's true. Let's just change the, what libraries mean slowly. Uh, but I do think, not to get serious, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this being, um, having access to all this information, again, does it make, is it better? Is it worse? Like, it, I'm not making a judgment about what's better and what's worse, but I do know that, you know, there's a lots of pontification about what's causing uh, the deconstruction movement, which I, when I talk about the de- deconstruction movement, I'm talking about people deconstructing their traditional faith. That's not just happening within evangelical Christianity, our background is happening all over the world, people are deconstructing traditional belief systems. Um, to be a person who did that in the 80s, again, when you couldn't right. ask your dad what the capital of Delaware was in, unless he like was from there. Um, if you asked an adult in your life a, a, a deep question about the nature of existence. Well, if you were in North Carolina in the 80s, you most likely were going to, whether you asked a person who was from your church or went to church or not, they were going to kind of say the same thing. Like philosophically, everybody was like, well, this is right. rooted in a Judeo Christian worldview. It's like God created the earth and like, you know, there's a couple of things you got to do. Maybe it's do good things. Maybe it's accept whatever to get to heaven. People had different takes on it. But you never thought, maybe that's not true. 
Because why would you think maybe that's not true? Everyone else thinks this. Like, it's just part of the fabric of your culture and your society. Very, I mean, And it was pretty regional. I mean, I remember for me, it was during a uh, one of the most significant, like, stages in my initial reevaluating th- reevaluating things uh, was having a bunch of time at work on in my first engineering job having a bunch of time on the internet because all our projects were getting shut down because of the whole Enron thing that was happening. Okay. And so I was supposed to be reading manuals, but I was going on the internet to just research things. And I mostly just fun things like crow hunting or uh, ultralights and all those stages that we talk about. Yeah. But I also was interested in Bible stuff. And then I would, and I was going to, bolster things. I was like, I, I want to like be able to defend this thing. I've got this, uh, you know, people are asking this question. I want to be able to defend it. But then very quickly, I just found myself getting exposed to these different perspectives, all Christian, but like different perspectives. Like, oh, this, this guy is oh, like, yeah. thinks that there is, there are things in the Bible that are not true, you know, or like, it's not inerrant. Uh, it's, it's infallible, but it's not inerrant. And all of a sudden, that's some. I, that's something I would have never found in a library book. I would have. I mean, yeah, sure, it's in there somewhere. But why am I going to look it up? And so, right. To me, that is. People are like, it's, it's this video games or it's this or that. The reason people are deconstructing traditional beliefs is because they have access to a bunch of information. I'm not making even making a judgment on whether traditional beliefs are right or wrong. I'm just saying that if people get exposed to other perspectives and critical perspectives on the things that they were told when they were kids, a certain percentage of them are going to leave those traditional beliefs behind. It's inevitable regardless of the truth claims. And um, that's a, it's a, as a parent, now, first of all, I don't have a dogmatic worldview that I'm passing on to my kids. It's like, you have to believe this. Mostly it's like, hey, like, we want you to be a loving person and there's a whole lot of stuff we don't know about. And we, we trust you and we're, you know, we'll figure it out together. It's a very different system. Right. But also, if I start talking to my kids about something, they already know about it and many, and many times. But also, if I say something, they can immediately go and figure out, well, what does somebody think about what dad just said? What do, what does the internet think about this? You know what I'm saying? It just... Parents don't have the same level of authority when it comes to information because that was the only place you could go. Yeah. If you wanted to know something, you asked the adults in your life, and the adult that you were around the most was your parents. And now you're like, I know my dad or my mom doesn't know as much as the internet does about this thing. So that's a, that's a shift that we, we, we live through. Yeah, like but the, like we the th- level we of, of critical thinking has gone up because the ease with which you can check things and know things. Well, you just said the level of critical thinking has gone up, hmm. which maybe it's gone down. Let's think about it. Well, critical thinking I, is, I your, think, is your ability to th- to like think through something logically. I don't know well, if that's gone up. Well, I think that to be contrast, exposed to other perspectives, like being, I think we were okay with not knowing things. It's like we. We were had to be comfortable with not knowing where people were, or not knowing what the capital of things were, or not being totally certain about things. So, like, because there is this, there is a just a baseline expectation that something you you can get to the bottom of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I th- I think that does make. I don't know if that makes you a more critical thinker. But it makes you more critical. Yeah, that, I agree with that. I mean, I ha- haven't studied this, but I don't. I think that people are not. I, we have. We have. We know more. We have access to more information. But because you can kind of just get it through a search, I think that critical thinking is like one of the biggest issues right now. It's like lack of critical thinking. I mean, it's not like it's ever been great, like across all of society or whatever, but. I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not so sure. With I, so much information, it's certainly more important to f- figure out how to be a critical thinker <laughs> because you got to sort. It's more so important, important than ever. Yeah. Um, you know, you were talking about being in that engineering job and just having access to 
all the information and I said, oh, now I can learn about this. Now I can learn about that. For me, that was, um, th- there was like the music aspect of it. That was... Learning about music? Well, <laughs> but having it at your fingertips yeah. with, you know, I was talking about Napster and LimeWire, like illegally downloading. Of course, the music industry had to catch up, but... It was such an exciting time. I, I didn't have a personal computer or a laptop until I started working at IBM in 2000. Like, other than yeah. that, like some, like, yeah, I didn't, we didn't, I had a, we, we I shared a computer. A computer. In my, uh, apartment, uh, senior year. That, senior that, that year. Dell computer that I used. We would go to videos. computer labs and use those for schoolwork. Um, and then you could, I guess you could download music. I didn't take the time to download and then burn CDs. Like there were, there was talk of it being illegal and I didn't know about that. But then like at IBM, I would start downloading music and listening to it on like Winamp just to have something to listen to while I'm working. You were, so you were doing this on company time and company computer. Oh yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's trouble. You could have been taken to jail. Well, before that though. But it was... Before that, the, we, we did not have, we talked a little bit about this as we were putting together the, the single. We were just talking about the level of, the amount of music that you had in your home, right? It, it consisted of your parents' record collection. I don't know about you, but like, you know, my parents yeah. being born in the 40s, you know, being teenagers in the my 50s. My mom had records. Going to college in the 60s. They had a bunch of records, and my mom bought a lot of tapes. I, I took a bunch of those records and I took the ones that I wanted, put them in my room and I had my record player. And so I had that. And then, and so, and eventually like you had your nicer stereo that had like a turntable on top of it. And then double, and then rec- double, double cassette. cassette. And then two speakers. Like if, you know, you had arrived as a kid, if there, there was a dresser, in your room, that, and on top of that dresser was a stereo with with separate speakers, and it had equalization. Ooh. It had equalization. Oh yeah, like these little these little equalization knobs, or yeah. uh, you know, switches, whatever you call it. And I could play my parents' records. I could play the cassettes that I was buying, but the frequency that I bought new tapes was one every two months. For me. Yeah. I, yeah, it was about the same for five me. Five or six albums a year. Right. And of course, so w- the main mechanism of discovery is just listening to the radio. And it was just so narrow. And you would record, because you had that fancy uh, cassette deal, you could record the radio. Yep. So you would r- listen to the radio, and then when your song that you wanted... Now, first of all, you might know, okay, they're doing the countdown tonight, and I know that Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire, which I didn't need to record that because I had the album. (laughs) Uh, Right. If Billy Joel did it, I was there for it. And uh, you recorded it, and you were like, oh, man, the DJ talked right up until he sang. Because some DJs would be like, yeah, I'm going to say a couple of things sucks. as the song's coming in. Here we go. We've got Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. And then it's like, nah, 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 Renberg, whatever he would say. Right. Right, on, right, right on top of it. And then you would perpetuate that in like your mixtape. So then like this DJ's intro is now becomes part of it. And the fidelity of the music. Yeah. First of all, we were on cassettes. So it's like the worst medium yep. in recent history for audio quality, but then add to that that you're getting this FM signal that doesn't have, you know, it's got static. It depends on what, what station you're listening to. Like, it's not perfect. Mm-mm. But that was it, and it was so precious. It, it, the, the, the choices you, you made about this were so precious, and you had to pay for every single thing. And then, for me, the, big, the weird little transition that took place while we were in college, before the stage that you just described of downloading music, was BMG and the other one that was yeah. just like BMG. Yeah. So, Jen, I don't know. Ten if, CDs if you for, a, this. for a cent. Do you remember the BMG catalog that you would get CDs that, that you would... You too young for that? Um, that was like a 90s... You would pay, you'd pay a cent 
and they would they you would send you like twelve CDs that you picked from a catalog, and and sometimes it would be stamps, and you would each each little stamp would be an album, and you would rip out the ones that you wanted, and you would you would select your twelve, and you'd you'd lick the stamp, and you'd put it down there like a checkbox almost, like yeah. a checkbox. There was little checkboxes all down with and all. And then these you CDs. would get CDs. You would get all this. <coughs> you get all these CDs. And then after that, they would mail you a CD in the genre of your choosing. It was a subscription service. You weren't paying a cent. You were paying a cent to sign up for to this start. thing. And then it was incredibly difficult to cancel. It was like seven ninety nine a month or something like that. And they and made they would it send you very a, difficult to cancel. They'd send you a CD, and then you could send it back and get a refund or get a different one. I think you could exchange it. But no one ever did yeah, that. Yeah, my, my parents wouldn't have put up with that. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have let me do that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so we did. So our parents didn't do it. We did it in college. Well, I would do the twelve, and then I would I would cancel. I figured out how to cancel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kid, do that. Rest so, assured. I remember being um, presented with. Okay, you get to pick twelve, mm-hmm. and and up until that point, I was on a five to six albums a year clip up for the, my entire life. Yeah, and this then is suddenly exciting. to be presented with twelve albums. Yeah, I got. I ran out of options. Like, I got to like number six, and I was like, "Well, I've got everything I want right. because I've got everything that I know from this list." And, was, and then, I was like, I, well, I'll get this greatest hits from Kansas, right? You ended up forcing yourself. I remember because growing up in Bowie's Creek, it's like Justin we, the Wind's pretty good. Maybe. We listened to country and we listened to rap. We didn't, we weren't really into rock, but I remember seeing. Bob Marley, and I was like, I've heard that name. Yeah. Never, have had no idea what kind of music this is. Where, when would I have heard it? <laughs> when would I have heard reggae? I didn't know what reggae was. Reggae. I can't even say it right. Reggae. And so. What's this reggae? I remember getting that and this being like, this is incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'd forgotten that I chose it because it was And you would have to borrow six. it. I would borrow that one from you. And then I would, you know, I had a friend freshman year in college who, like, I took about 18 CDs and, like, we would start trading them and selling them to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the discovery mechanisms were, were so limiting. And you could record your CDs onto a cassette and then right. give somebody the cassette. Highly illegal, but we did it. We sure. made mixtapes. That was pretty, that was important. That was, and mixtapes were a really important part That was part never, mixtapes were never, like, like said to, it wasn't cracked down on no. in any way. No. Not like that. In an after age, people were made examples of. Like, these people would have, like, thousands of songs on their hard drive, on their computer, and then there was, you know, there was, like, a federal sweep of college kids getting arrested. You remember that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You hear about it happening in other schools. And at IBM, I would be like, oh, Lionel Richie has all these songs I didn't know about because they weren't right. on the two albums that my mom oh, owned. Yeah. yeah. And I, so all of a sudden, this world just opened up to me and it was like amazing, yet it was all like pirated and st- they, a lot of it would be strange. Well, like what- strange versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the things I think that this did is once things became so ubiquitous and you can listen to anything you want from anyone, and also it's much easier to make music and distribute it on the same platforms. And we won't even talk about AI music, which is another huge that's, shift. That's a different thing. It's But it, it affects this, what I'm talking about, is everything, with every iteration, it becomes less special because it becomes less rare and precious. And we just associate, and so I think one of the things, the way that we perceived celebrity culture, because I want to talk a little bit about TV and movies, but the yeah. distance between us and anyone who did entertainment that we consumed was a vast gulf, unfathomable yeah. distance between us and Lionel Richie. <laughs> Still is. Can't get them on the show. Apparently, um, but there were so few people who were able to do it in a way that you would end up knowing about because we could only consume so much. 
I, I don't, th- that's a really mind blowing thing to me. Cause it also impacts when you think about visual entertainment and obviously now if you want to make a show, you can also do it with a camera. Yes. There's like, gatekeepers or whatever but like the 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 lines between tv and streaming or whatever like everything is blurred i remember uh, you've heard this but i had a cousin who ended up being in a oscar meyer commercial okay and i don't remember this um i had met him one time he was younger than i was and he was in an Oscar Mayer commercial where, like, the hot dog like drops out of the bun and a dog eats it or something. Okay, it was, like on the on TV, like on national TV. And I don't this. He, he lived in Georgia. Uh, I didn't really know the family. Like, it was just like was we had cousins. I don't even remember. And I, I met him one time at like My a family cousin reunion. has a first name. I don't remember what right. it is. And I just remember my, when my mom said, "You know, uh, Bo <laughs> is in a." Oscar Mayer wiener commercial. <laughs> the dog eats his wiener. And I had to sit with that. I, I want you to I want you to understand how much I had to sit you with that. You had to that. sit with that? You had to take a seat. It changed everything for me. <laughs> what? You, you see, you've forgotten. You have you, you look He's at crossed me, over. You look at me with this incredulity or whatever the word is. Um but you would have thought the same thing. To know that you were related to someone who was in a commercial changed everything. And I just remember this sitting there thinking about like he was in a he's on TV, like he had he had to like sit there and do this thing and now it's on TV and I can see it while watching like Deuce of Hazard. <laughs> like how? Like how and you did, would see it because you how did he skip do the commercials? It? And Obviously now it's like you probably go to school with an influencer, right? You've got you've got several at your school probably. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Somebody and so whatever, or like you're in a neighborhood and like somebody's their library's full of influencers. Yeah, somebody's mom taking is, naps is is doing that thing uh, that we talked about on GMM recently with the mixing of the, yeah. the waters, water, water talk, water talking it up, and so. And I, th- I mean, ultimately, I think this is a good thing. I, I, I think that understanding that everyone's just a person is a good thing. But things, entertainment has gotten so much less special in the way that we relate to it. Um, yeah. It's created all kinds of opportunities. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have be talking right now. No one would care to listen to this because they wouldn't know it was happening. We would not have a career. We would be doing whatever else. So it's been good for us. It's created jobs and opportunities and all this stuff. But our relationship to an individual piece of content, because it's so disposable, I don't know, man. It's changed things. I was trying to figure out, you know, it's like, what, what has the internet not touched? This morning, I went to the dentist. Thanks for noticing. Did you have an issue? Just a cleaning. I uh, Just a cleaning. And they had a sign up said, please do not be on your cell phone when you're in here and you're in the dentist chair. And I honored that. And I just sat there and thought about, maybe the dentist chair is the, is the last final bastion of, of internetless experience. You know, you got to have a person getting in your mouth. How long did you sit there? To do something. 30 minutes. How long did you sit there? Oh, before they were working Bef- on me? But when you could have been on your phone. Practically. Seven minutes, which was so, it was torture. Okay. What did you do? What did you look at? What's give me, give me the scene. There was a um, there was a print of a painting of a s- scene in France on the wall, and then there was a, a window next to it. And I oscillated between looking out the window and um, looking at the France painting mm. and just thinking about France how much I miss the internet in that moment. My dentist has a TV and on the TV is pictures that he has taken while traveling. Okay. And he takes pictures, not like, hey, here's me in front of the Taj Mahal. He just takes pictures of things and mostly he likes to uh, fancy himself as a nature photog. 
Really? So it'd be like, he obviously like went on a safari and like he took a picture of like two zebras. <laughs> And it doesn't, we're not talking and National how did Geographic. You know this he's definitely what? a dentist. He's not a, he's not a prote- professional photographer. Did he tell you these are my photos? You can tell. Oh, okay. 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 I've been there enough times and seen enough to know. He takes pictures wherever he goes and he puts them on the, and let me tell you. It gives you something to talk about. Uh, I'd say in, in, in uh, if you sit there for five minutes, the slideshow is going to repeat a few times. Oh. We don't have a whole, I mean, he's giving you the best of the best. Mm-hmm. And I kind of, he sort of puts me in a little bit of a daze. I don't think about anything at all. I just like, zebras. Dentists taking pictures of gazelles. Lions. Waterfall. You know, and uh, so that's what he does. To kind of, so it's a little kind of, I think he knows, because they have the same sign. If, you, if we sit these people in these chairs and we don't give them something to look at. Yeah. We don't know what we're going to have on our hands, you know? Yeah, you get antsy of just not knowing something new. Something new's going on. Somebody might be talking to me. I might be able to conduct some sort of a relationship through this internet right now. Well, I mean, mean, it's also, there's an addiction there's an addiction to it too. It's like, it's, it's you don't even think about it. Right. If, you, if your wife goes into the, um, is like, I'm going into this store and you are not going into the store. And I am not. And you are the guy who's sitting on the bench. Yeah. Outside of the store. What yeah. are you going to do? Just look like a crazy person that looks like a private eye who's like watching people? <laughs> right. You got to be you on don't your wanna, phone. You don't want to creep you people out. out. Yeah. A man sitting on a bench. Not on his phone. Head up. Looking around. He's private eye. That dude is up to no good. That guy is a part of a larger operation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, yep. I'm on the lookout. Might as well give him an earpiece. Right. Right. Yeah, you can't get away with that. You can't be sitting and looking. This actually makes me feel better about constantly being on my phone. But So I'm not creeping people out. You feel that little itch. You feel that little itch in your brain. And it doesn't have to be anything. It literally is. Right. It's information that doesn't do anything to enrich your life, and you also can't do anything about it. Let's just be honest. You find out the latest thing that happened in the, in the, the war on the, uh, the front in the Ukraine war. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't be informed, but what is, you're sitting outside a cheesecake factory and you find out the latest thing that happened, what are you gonna do? You're about to eat a fucking cheesecake. You're not, you're not gonna do anything with that information. What are you going to do? Well, make you're going to know it. Make a call to Zelensky and give him some advice? Well, ma- maybe. No, you're not. But you're going to know You're just going to eat cheesecake. But you're going to know it. And then knowledge is But power. did you need to know it right there? I'm not saying you shouldn't be no. informed. But shouldn't there just be like a little time in the day? Like, okay, I want to know what's going on in the world. Yep. Here it is. But I keep trying to figure out like... Let's try to go a day without the internet. Can you try to do that? I mean... I'm not going to turn that into a video. That seems lame. Well, I've tried to. I haven't succeeded. I tr- I've tried to stop, lo- like, no phone after 7 p.m. I did that for, like. What about, like, a all day? Two weeks. Well, let's start baby steps, man. Like, not having the internet so two for weeks, our work. two weeks, 7 o'clock, you put your phone somewhere. I put it, like, on a charger. Yeah, but you did. But if you stream something, that's the internet. You just tried to get rid of your phone. I'm saying get rid of the internet. Like you can't stream anything. Yeah, but streaming is like TV. But that's the internet. Yeah, but what? What's this? What? What, what are you trying to avoid at that point? I'm not saying it's not it's, a good it's, idea, it's but it feels like a different thing. Of, I'm trying to break the habit of like, give me. I, I know that. Give me this thing. But let since me feel this is an in. internet conversation, I'm trying to broaden it to like okay. you can't get away from it unless you go to the dentist. Okay, but like, can I watch a VHS? Yes. What's the difference? It doesn't use the internet. I'm just saying, I'm being a stickler here. Okay, well, I'm going to... Name I, something I, besides g- going to the dentist where you're not going <laughs> to... So you want me to... Like maybe take a hike? You, okay. You want me to play Succession on my TV and record it on my VCR? I don't even know how to do that anymore. How would I even do that? Well, you, but you have a VCR? No. Exactly. I'd have to buy a VCR. You couldn't watch... I'd have to hook it up to my TV. If you were going a day without the you internet... Can't, you can't even be you done. Couldn't, you couldn't watch entertainment. You couldn't listen to... You couldn't be entertained 
by anything that you could watch or listen to. It all goes through the Some internet. Some people have made this choice, just, just so you know, and there's no doubt they're happier. No doubt. I mean, this whole idea of like getting some information, again, finding out, you know, that two celebrities that you don't know are getting a divorce and finding that out right before you go to bed. Right, you don't need to what, do that. Wait, 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 what? I, what am I going to do with that? Now I'm going to dream about Tom yeah. Brady and Giselle and and and, well, you got an and, opportunity. And, and the problems in their relationship. What? As my cheesecake digests, <laughs> right? As my perfectly curated <laughs> meal of as much fat and sugar just moves slowly through my digestive system, and I'm just dreaming about Giselle. <laughs> 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 uh, like it's just idiocracy, man. That's what we're living in. You know it. You know it. That's what we're living in, dude. Let's just get outside. Let's touch some grass. They say. Let's touch grass. Um, that's what we need to do today. It's not my wreck, but that's my wreck. Well, my wreck is get a robe. What? <laughs> and this is get a robe. This is intended for those of you. 40 and above, if you're under 40. McLaughlin residence. If you're under 40, you can move along. Uh, I just got to say, if you're 40 and above, you should have a robe. Because, listen, I'm just going to be honest with you. I know there's a lot of you onesie folks out there, and I don't want to, I don't want to shit on your little onesie parade. But really, you need to move on. You're too sweaty. You need First to, of all, like you need to move on from a onesie. It's a for it's for the forty and under crowd. It's really technically for kids, but we'll give you like an additional twenty five years. So the robe is the old man's onesie. A robe is all a, a onesie is all about being comfortable, and I'm just saying, but also being dressed up as an animal usually. I I'm just saying that the robe is the ultimate loungewear, and but they come open too easily. No, not if you get a good one. And are you recommending no underwear? No, I'm recommending whatever you like. Uh, I typically wear underwear under mine because okay, it's just like, but nothing else. If you sit down, and slippers are nice too. If your feet, if you're like, oh, but the ones that make my feet feel good, well, get wear some slippers. <laughs> I'm just saying you should have a robe. Uh, I love that you're going after the onesie community. No, no, you're more sophisticated <laughs> than that. You are like you, 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 you've There's graduated. Seven to a you've graduated. Old, right? You've graduated to a new level. Thirty of year olds don't wear onesies, dude. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, like a Jenna. Yeah, see, yeah, they do. They do. Now, I've never been much of a onesie guy because of you know, they're not sized properly and it feels like the Grand Canyon is trying to make its way through my crotch. I'm going to take your advice, though. I'm going to... I would have thought I have a robe. Already, you've already got robes. Yeah, I, I just don't know how to really use it. You don't wear your robe? Like, no. If I'm... what what? So when I get home from work, am I just... I strip down into underwear and put on a robe. I'm not saying that. I'm not much of a. Can I call it a smoking jacket? You, even though no smoking you is going to be involved. You can do whatever you want to. I, I'm not. In the, if you want to do this, it's totally fine. I'm not a uh, m- much. I'm sure to people's shock. I'm not a get home and change clothes, change into something more comfortable kind of guy. I, just, I am. You know. But this not a robe. So I'm, I'm, the robe is a weekend thing for me. Okay. There, there are definitely Saturdays, maybe Sundays. Robe mode. Where nothing touches me other than a robe. Ah, uh, challenge accepted, man. Uh, I'm going to work on my robe mode. And it's very difficult to have an argument with someone in a robe. If you see somebody in a onesie, you want to argue with them. You kind of know that they're probably wrong before you even know what we're talking about. You talking about the grocery store? Have you robed it to the grocery store? I'm not an idiot. Go, go Lebowski? No, I have some standards. But I'm just saying that, I'm not saying that I get into a lot of arguments, but it would be difficult for my wife to get too upset with me. 
if I was in a robe. You look like, I mean, you look like a, a loafer, dude. And it makes... It's easy to get upset. It makes like, you feel... Make something of yourself. You've been in your robe all day. Well, and it makes you feel like how many things could go wrong right now? Like, how many different situations could I find myself in that would be life-threatening or... There's in a, a robe? Well, you could expose yourself to the mailman. Right. He's not going to kill me for that. But also, if something does go wrong, you're very much not that likely to get too concerned about it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's the state oh, of mind. Oh, gosh. Somebody's arm just got almost completely severed, and now we got to go to the emergency room. I'm in a robe, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, let's not rush. Uh, okay. Let's not, let's not let this, this is, upset this is... the apple cart too much. Okay. Maybe I need a new robe. I mean, the only so, reason I started doing get the robe. excited about. When we got that robe at the YouTube Summit, which is a ridiculous robe, by the way. Yeah. I mean, first of all, it like says it. Good Mythical Morning on it. <laughs> no. And it's got, one side one? is candy cane and one s side is green and blue stripes. First of all, don't judge me for wearing something for, that says Good Mythical Morning on it that we got at a YouTube thing because you wear that giant hoodie that says Good Mythical Morning on it and you wore it at a party at your house with like mixed company. Well, I was cold. Yeah, but I mean, I, mean, I, I don't do that. I'm not gonna wear that robe outside yeah. of my family. I have four. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a rotation? You well, lost no, these three. things? Yeah, you have, if you wear them as much as me. That one's a terry cloth one. Yeah. Great for drying off. And then I got a thin one. And then I've got one that Jesse got me, another terry cloth one that's like a white one that's like my backup. It looks a little too much like I'm trying to go to a spa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's all white, but it's if, I, if the other two are in the laundry. I'm just saying you should try it. You should try it. If you're over 40, Thank do you. it. It will make you feel differently about everything. I'm going to try it. Of course. Join the conversation using hashtag Ear Biscuits and leaving us a voicemail responding to this or any other episode. one 888 one Next week, we're going to be talking about male relationships, friendships. Hey, Rhett and Link. This is Colton. I am calling you from the inside of the IBM Building 305. We are uh, testing the audio. You might be able to hear the music, but I just remember hearing your podcast about your engineering days, and I thought of you guys, thought of you, Link, knowing that you used to work out here. Uh, it's pretty cool to feel like I'm kind of walking in your footsteps a little bit. So I just wanted to shout out, tell you guys I'm thinking about you guys, and uh, hope you guys are having a great day. And uh, yeah. That's all I got. Bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.